Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing alright, if you're a Chelsea fan you're not doing alright, if you're a Nottingham Forest fan, congratulations on the point, very deserved, if anything I think towards the end of the game Nottingham Forest maybe even deserved three points, but got a point, it's a good point, Forest needed it, sitting in 19th, they needed something, they got it against us, because we're here for the taking right now aren't we, anyway, congrats Forest on the point, in terms of us though, Let's get cracking. This is going to be a very, very interesting episode. It's going to be a very interesting review. And the sleeves are coming up for this one because... <sighs> Where do you point the finger at? Where do you point it at? Crazy. There's so many things that need addressing here. And this isn't going to be reactionary. This is just a continuation of what we've been saying every single game. Except for the last one. But even the last one, there's a point to make. There's a point to make that relates to today. I'll get to that. Anyway. Before we do, I want to let you know, don't forget, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Insta, links in the description, I'm back on Twitter, you'll hear all my no-tos and what I've got to say and whatnot on Twitter, so make sure you're there and you're following me, all the latest updates when I have to get out to you are there. Also, the latest members in the starting 11 of the Eunice Talks Football channel, much appreciated for joining, if you haven't hit that join button already, but here are the shout-outs, they are Zach Trevino, Juicy Sai Krishna, and Martin Balak, thank you very much for joining the channel. You're in the start in 11. Enjoy the perks. Let's get cracking. Nottingham Forest 1, Chelsea 1. This has so many levels. You know, normally bef before, right, something, something doesn't go right. It's very easy to pinpoint the mistake, right? It's very easy to go, uh, those players had an absolute nightmare. Uh, the manager got this thing wrong. Um... Oh, we weren't, we weren't really showing enough mentality. We weren't really quick enough. We weren't being urgent. We weren't sticking ourselves in for the first and second balls. We, there's always, you can, you can pinpoint the direction of a game on something. Today was everything. Today was everything. Everything is wrong. This football club right now, and this is where I want to relate it back to the last game, even though we won. Even though we won, but there was a correlation with that game and today. The only difference was Bournemouth didn't have the minerals to actually try and get something from that game because they were worse than us. Not on Forest today, though. Why is it after we've come back from the World Cup, right? Against Bournemouth, we start off decent. There's actually movement. We, we do something. We take the lead. We get, we get ourselves out there. It's all looking good. And then in the second half, we come out of the dressing room. The second half, it all shifts. Now, there's one point to make, which is Reese James. And a lot of people with the Bournemouth game were looking to Reese James. The moment Reese James came off, everything changed. But it was the same today. We started off the game fairly decent, I would say. Fairly decent. Went 1 0 up. Little bit of a fluky goal, let's be honest. The ball literally lands to Sterling on a plate. He smashes it and it goes in. I don't know what Havertz was trying to do. If he had pulled that off, it would have been ridiculous. But anyway, sometimes those things happen. You take advantage of the situation. Good. We went 1-0 up, right? Didn't do too much towards the end of the first half. It wasn't exciting, but it wasn't terrible. We come out for the second half and we it's like it's like we haven't come out for the second half. You, you might as well have had Nottingham Forest, just 11 of them on the pitch and no one else, right? Because that is what it felt like. Why is it? And the last game, we pinpointed it to Rhys James. Rhys James is off. We've lost balance. I refuse, right, to say that a club like Chelsea Football Club, with the calibre of players that we actually have, cannot even do something because one player is missing. Like, no, I'm sorry. That if, if that is where we are, we deserve to get relegated. With all due respect, we should not be in the Premier League. <laughs> not, forget talking about a European place. We shouldn't be in the Premier League. If you fall apart because you've lost one man, everything stops. That was proven today. We all had that look insight in terms of the Bournemouth game. Today confirmed that when we come out for a second half, once we win, we're winning, we're up. Players and manager. Players and manager. Players have got responsibility for what they've got to do on the pitch. But I'm sorry. This is what I've kept saying. This is what I said pre-World Cup. The body language is off, guys. Can we stop pretending that we're not seeing what we're seeing? Everyone's got blinders. Take them off. The body language is off. 
it's not right. It's not right. The attitude that we are playing with is not right. How many times in that second half did we see no movement, everyone static, we have the ball, we try and progress it forward, we pass it backwards. Then we go sideways, we bring it back into the middle, there's no one to take the ball forward, we go backwards. And it's just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It's the same story. Nothing happens. Did we even have a shot in the second half? I don't think we did. I, I'm sorry, against 19th place Nottingham Forest. And all due respect, Nottingham Forest, as I've said, today they... They had not just mentality, urgency, physicality. All of these things should be basic for a top team in the Premier League, whether you're talking about Chelsea, City, United, Arsenal, Liverpool. You can even say Tottenham, because let's face it, they are there, right? They always have been. They just won't progress. That's the problem with Tottenham. They just will never actually excel to the places above. They'll just remain where they are forever. But those teams have the basics. And that is to have that elite level of mentality, physicality, urgency, getting stuck in, moving, creating space, catching your opponents off guard where they can't notice. You're, you're quicker than them. You're sharper than them. You are playing for Chelsea Football Club. We don't have that. But at the same time, we haven't got a manager on the touchline to actually correct the situation. This is what I'm looking at. Players, responsible. Manager, responsible. But my point and why I brought up the Bournemouth game is because it's a common saying, it's existed for years and I fully agree with it and I always have and I always will. There's a saying that goes, the first half belongs to the players, the second half belongs to the manager. Now you can take from that what you will, but I completely agree. When you go out, you start a game, the first instinct the way the game's going to go, it's up to the players. The manager can't do anything. The game has just started. He can set you up. He can get you ready. Boom, you go out. It's on the players to make whatever the plan is to happen. In the second half, it's on the manager to have observed everything in that first half and to rectify anything that's going wrong, to enhance anything that's going right, to make the correct substitutions, to time things correctly, to analyse and study the way that the game is going in order to make the correct decisions to get the result. Twice now, the second half has come and we have looked like we haven't come out the dressing room. I'm sorry, but that points to the manager. And when you're looking at the substitutions that were made today, I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> you... Like, really? <laughs> really? You know, it, and I know people are going to say, well, yeah, no, we brought, off, we brought on Kovacic. Well, great. Kovacic looked like he was struggling because we ended up putting Gallagher next to him. Gallagher, who done absolutely nothing. Some of the players that were even there in the first, in the first half looked blank, looked absent. And the moment that we look like we're starting to struggle, it's like everyone wants to hide. But then there's no one to actually try and correct them. Bot has been with these lads for some time now. And it just looks like even coming towards the end, the end of the game, you saw Potter. It looked like he was smoking. He was just like... Like, can you do something? Can you say something? Can you show some urgency? Can you show some anger? Can you try and get the players to think, oh, he's not happy. We've, we've got... We've, we got to go now, lads. we got to go now. Because it looks like things are a bit too lenient. It looks like the players are going, oh, yeah, we're going to try our best. Oh, it's not quite working. Oh, okay, let's just keep going. Let's just hope. That's where it feels like. It feels like the players mentally, physically, any sort of elite that you want to say, it just doesn't look like we're at the level we need to be. But there's no one to try and push them, to try and go, no, you need to do more. Do more. This is what you need to do. This is Push them, encourage them, motivate them. Yes, they need to motivate themselves. But this is why I'm saying in the first half we come out, it looks like there's something and then it disappears. Later on, we, as I've said, we get that first goal. The goal for Nottingham Forest. I mean, what? How is the ball dropping in the box with that many bodies where we are meant to be taller, stronger than them? It lands to Serge Aurier, who, well... It lands to uh, the Nottingham Forest player in before who manages to get the header in. Jorginho jumps way too early. The defenders are just watching. People are ball watching. Gets to Serge Aurier. He has the time in that space, in that six-yard box, to be able to chest it and then volley it into the net without anyone piling some sort of pressure on him. I mean, it's ridiculous. 
That's ridiculous defending for, from everyone there. That was absolutely stupid. I don't understand how we make those sort of mistakes. And then po post that, you see, what's the plan? What system are we playing? What are we trying to do? It goes back to the points I've made. Ball sitting with the central defender, one of them. They try to move. They try to pass the ball, whether it's Gallagher, whether it's Kovacic. They try to turn. There's no one. All right, pass backwards. Back to the player who just gave it to him. And then I'll try and go to the right. Try and go to Aspi. Oh, okay, there's no one in midfield to pass to. It's just a big hole. Okay, I'm going to go backwards. It's just the same. It's, it's the same story, the same thing over and over and over again, and it's not changing. My concern, my concern, because on paper... Yes, it looks nice. It looks exciting. When you talk about the recruitment that we got, when you talk about Potter, when you talk about everyone that we got from Brighton, everyone we're taking from Brighton, it actually looks like we are becoming Brighton. Do you realise this? A team that doesn't challenge for titles, a team that doesn't challenge for trophies, a team that is progressing well with the, with the, with the players that they recruit and then they sell. They are, they are a feeder club when you think about it. They are a team that has some sort of stability, but that's their level. We are becoming that. I don't know if people are starting to realise. We are actually turning into a mid-table club. That's the way it's looking right now. And right now, in terms of the way that we play or what we're trying to do, which is non-existent, and I still don't know what it is, you could bring on an Enzo, you could bring in whoever, you could bring in Messi from 15 years ago, and it would probably still be the same story. This is why I am looking to the bench. I'm looking to the manager. And it's crazy that even with the bench, even with the substitutions that I've already mentioned, it's insane that when you're talking about trying to make a difference, you bring on players like Aubameyang. He brings on Ziyech. And look, that was a plus when you're being completely honest. Ziyech, I actually don't have anything negative to say. Kepa, I don't have anything negative to say. Everyone else, I probably have something negative to say. But when you're looking to try to get someone on that's going to probably make the difference. Like he takes off Pulisic and brings on Chukwameka to stick him on the left. I mean, Chukwameka, who is a... A, a, a central midfielder, when you think about it, a, a, an attacking midfielder, you could say, but not someone to fling out on the on the flank. If anyone is to fling out onto the flank, you're probably looking at Hutchinson. No one there to call on Hutchinson, though, who you, we all know can probably come on and make a difference within 10 minutes because he's fast and he's electric. Something. Nope. Lewis Hall is probably the brightest used player on that bench right now who deserves football because whenever he's actually playing, he looks good, unlike some others doesn't get called upon I I don't understand I don't understand and then we play the way we play we bottle it against Nottingham Forest and now we've got to play Manchester City twice and this is where I just know it's going to fall apart I just know it's going to fall apart we, we let's be real I'm going to be completely frank with you guys I'm going to be completely honest we're losing those two games I'm going to tell you that now we are losing both games at the bridge and at the Etihad do not bet on it don't Right, if you want to, you can probably put put something on City, but I'm not I'm not advocating that. We're not. Go I don't personally. I don't think we're winning those games. As I said, we needed to beat Bournemouth. We needed to beat Forest in order to give us some sort of bounce, some sort of. Oh, you know what? Maybe we're picking up some form. We play the way we did today, which was despicable, horrible. Every single adjective you could think of in the dictionary. Bring it. It applies. Horrible. Manager and players. It just looks like there's so much surgery that is needed at this football club that I don't know. And when people say trust the process, it's like we're actually turning into Arsenal. And I know Arsenal are top of the league right now and they're looking absolutely incredible. But they went how long? Have you got 18 years? You got 18 years to hang about without a title? I haven't. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I know we can get things much quicker than that. Unless people want to wait, we'll wait. But I'm not waiting, honestly. The fact is, when you look at this process, you've got to see steps of development. You've got to see us being better at least a little bit compared to how we were when Potter took over. Compared to how we were when Tuchel was in charge towards the end. We're not. I'd say we're worse. We're worse. So... What process? What process? A process that doesn't develop 
is going to be a process that a lot of people lose touch in and lose faith in very quickly before it turns sour and before a decision is made. You need to get in the modern game, in today's game, in the way that it is. Unfortunately, that is the way that it is. You need to get results as you build. If you don't, forget it. Right now, it doesn't look like we're getting it. We've won one in seven and we've got to play Man City twice in a row in the space of three days now. And we've got Liverpool not too long after that. I mean... This could get sticky. This could get sticky. That's all I'm going to say. Let me know your thoughts down below. How did you see it plan out today? And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. This is, uh, it's not looking good. It's not looking good whatsoever. We'll see. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Hit me up in the comment section below with all of your opinions. Hit the subscribe button if you are new today. Hit the uh, notification button to be notified once I've uploaded. Join. If you want to choose your tier and become a member of the channel, much appreciated. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Links in the description. And I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new one. Have a good one, people. See you then. Take care and peace.